Welcome back. Uh, this morning it was reported uh, GDP, gross domestic product, decreased an annual rate of 0.6% in the second quarter. Today's number confirms uh, the recession of two consecutive negative quarters of GDP. Uh, today was a final estimate. The PCE personal consumption expenditure rose by 6.2% from a year ago, following a revised 6.4%. The core inflation which excludes food and fuel, which are considered to be more volatile components of the index, rose at a rate of 4.9%. So we can see clearly the food and fuel uh, represents probably the tip of the uh, inflationary uh, pressures that we're seeing now. University Mission consumer sentiment rose to 58.2 from prior 51.5. It was a very small change. This is measured on a scale of 0 to 100. And it essentially shows how consumers feel about the economy, personal finances, business conditions, etc. So not a really big change. Uh, I would say University of Michigan consumer sentiment is still in a steady trend to the downside. Uh, but inflation is still rising. And again, the theme here is that as uh, inflation continues to rise, the Federal Reserve continues to uh, raise interest rates. We can see the white chart on the right hand side, PCE, personal consumption expenditure, very similar to the CPI and PPI, uh, with the exception where the consumer price index is similar to the personal consumption expenditure, with the exception that the PCE allows for substitution, where the CPI measures a static basket of goods and services that represents the U.S. consumer. The PCE allows for substitution. So if a consumer can't afford a luxury car, they may buy uh, a smaller, or smaller, a lesser price car. Uh, so at any rate, the inflation numbers are continuing to rise uh, over time. Also, University of Michigan, it's a steady trend to the downside. I wouldn't necessarily say that this report bucks this trend. I think uh, that the trend is your friend and the trend is certainly to the downside. Taking a look at the statistics, University of Michigan, again, it's 58.2 following a 51.5. Uh, this is after hitting the highest 10-month level of around 70.6, and the lowest level is 50. So we're right, and 50 was registered just in June. So I would not necessarily uh, consider this to be any any sort of victory uh, at all. Uh, rather, it's still, uh, I would say, in a turn to the downside. Here's a PCE. 123,721, registering a new high over the past 10 months. Inflationary uh, forces are here to stay. Uh, now, taking a look really quickly, the PCE has a very strong correlation between the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, that's actually a 100% correlation, as well as the PPI, the Producer Price Index, that has a 95% correlation. And you know, as we expect those numbers to be released, and uh, certainly the Federal Reserve is going to watch those numbers very closely. You know, if the CPI and PPI follow in the same fashion as the PCE and the correlation certainly do suggest that, uh, we may expect the Federal Reserve to you know, be even more hawkish and lean towards the idea of raising interest rates further, or at least not pausing. Take a look graphically at the correlation between the PCE, which is the blue histogram, and the red line, which is the PPI very very close trend i would say there's even a stronger correlation between the pce and the cpi cpi in this case is uh the red line and uh it's almost moving in lockstep so it measures you know inflationary forces on a little bit of a different uh dynamic but never nevertheless as inflation goes up both of these numbers will go up accordingly and uh the other day we spoke about the VIX, uh, you know, the probability of market outcomes uh, based on the VIX. We'll actually post that video right here. Uh, it was pretty interesting how it, how it turned out. We can see the VIX is uh, trading near the upper end of the Bollinger Bands. Uh, and as the Bollinger Bands expand, we tend to see breakouts. The blue line is a 20 simple moving average in the center. And the red line is the current levels of the VIX. But when we're in a tight trading range, the Bollinger Bands tend to stay very close together. But as we expect a breakout to the upside, we tend to see these bands expand, reflecting uh, a higher degree of volatility. And the same holds true, but obviously in the opposite direction uh, when we consider the S&P 500. 
trending in a long steady trend to the downside. Um, and certainly the Bollinger Bands look to be expanding and actually breaking below the lower band in this point. So uh, we certainly see a lot of volatility and the charts suggest that this is going to continue. Now, I would, I would really you know, suggest to take a look at the Bollinger Bands because it's a very helpful tool not only to help traders to plot trades to decide where to buy and sell, you know, in a downtrending market, traders may wait for the market to reverse back to the blue line, the 20 simple moving average, uh, but also that it's a healthy gauge of the market overall. Again, as we're in a range bound market, when the bands are relatively close together, we tend to see traders buy near the lower band, sell near the upper band. But when the bands begin to expand, and we can see in this case, the S&P 500 seems to hug the lower band once in a while we're tracing back to the 20 simple moving average but that's what a trend looks like is that when we remain on one side of the moving average and another band uh, so certainly um, that's something that we should take into consideration uh, meaning that traders don't necessarily look to pick bottoms when there is a strong trend in place in this case of the downside we actually put together another uh, really neat video that actually shows you how to code the Bollinger Bands yourself in Excel. So if you like to play with that, uh, like, the, like a lot of us, you know, please check that out and we'll throw that link up right here. We hope this has been helpful. We wish you a great day, pleasant weekend. We look forward to seeing you back soon.